Colin, K O L L I N G. Can you see what the is Yes, I do. Thank you. Mr. Colin, what is your occupation? I'm a professional planner, um, licensed in the state of New Jersey uh, since I think the early 1980s. I'm also certified by the American Institute of Certified Planners, again, for the same period of time. Uh, graduated from Rutgers University in 1974. I've been they must constantly uh, employ in the field since that, since that time. Um, in uh, the early 80s, I was the director of planning in the city of Jersey City. Through the decade of the 1990s, I was the director of the Edgar Development Corporation in the city of Elizabeth. Um, I appeared before boards of adjustments and planning boards throughout the state of New Jersey, uh, literally hundreds of times. <coughs> and, and based on your experience, uh, your, your experience not only as a planner, you also have a lot of experience with planning and uh, in cities. The bulk of my experience is as an urban planner, yes. Okay. And you uh, have heard the testimony of Mr. Mercado and Mr. Johnson uh, this evening. Uh, are you familiar with the zoning ordinance and the master plan of the city of New Brunswick? Yes, I have reviewed it. Okay. And are you also familiar with the subject property in the surrounding neighborhood? Yes, I've gone to the site and, and walked around the, uh, the blocks in the neighborhood. Okay. And can you indicate to the board why we're here tonight? Well, uh, we're here tonight primarily because of the, uh, the deep areas that are involved. One is the use variance. Uh, the uses are permitted in, in this district, uh, but specifically the uh, ground floors is to be commercial, and we were asking for one ground floor as mentioned in the unit. And then we're also here for D4 uh, floor area ratio variance. Uh, in addition, there's, there's a couple of bulk variances, the building coverage and the purchase co cover, and we're also seeking a variance in the loading area and the parking issue. Okay. And again, so the record is clear, the uh, building coverage in the zone uh, is 60 percent and what we are proposing is 79%. That's correct. Okay. And the impervious coverage, 90% is allowed, and we're slightly over 90%. Is that correct? That's correct. And don't have any loading area? No, the, this property uh, exists. The, the, the use that exists is the ground floor commercial and residential above. But the lot configuration inside is about 30 feet wide and ranges, I think, 95 feet on one edge and 101 on the other edge. This isn't the type of property where you could accommodate a loading area. It's a very traditional neighborhood commercial kind of property where loading areas were never ever provided. Okay. And, and again, we're thinking of parking variance. We're not providing any parking. Again, the way these neighborhood commercial areas evolved, there was not on-site on, on parking. These, these uh, areas evolved when parking when uh, oil bills which is much uh, less much less, and these uses tend to serve a local market area. Mm -hmm. And we <coughs> came to the board and, and reviewing the application, listening to the testimony, and again visiting the area. Are there any unique aspects <coughs> of this application? Well, the, the, I think when you look at the, at the building, you look at the property, and, and what's proposed, it's very consistent with what's at the long Street. You we walk up and down French Street from where the hospital is, up past this property. Uh, it's all ground floor commercial uses, it's all residential above. There are very narrow setbacks between the buildings. It's pretty much a continuous uh, neighborhood commercial district. And this is, I think, very consistent with that. Uh, the uses proposed, as I, as I pointed out, are permitted in, in the district, except that we're looking for the ground floor residential uh, for the handicap accessible unit. And that's being located on the side street, which is more residential in character, and adjacent to another residential property. So I think that that's a, a, appropriate in that regard. Um, obviously, these aren't inherently beneficial uses, but I think that they're uh, you know, they serving a local uh, local need, and that they uh, it's the accessible unit I think is is, is typically that's that's needed and it's actually required. Um, I think the way the building is designed. It's designed to continue, as I said, the character of the neighborhood uh, district. It's a corner property, 
So therefore, um, it's not unusual in urban design if you want a property to be a little taller, a little bit more pronounced. So I think it fits, fits into that of the neighborhood in that way as well. Um, the building, as originally designed, as was mentioned by the architect, were all large units, which in my opinion would be inappropriate in this area. You have a, it's a commercial district primarily, so you don't want to have large units that generate a lot of children, because it's not really an area appropriate for children right on the commercial street. So I think the smaller units are more appropriate, and I think that's another aspect of this design that helps to fit into the, uh, uh, this proposal. Um, so I think those those things show that the site is uh, is well suited for this this, this use and the use has been well designed to be accommodated uh, on the site. Now, again, you've indicated that one of the things that you're seeking is uh, basically a coverage variance uh, <coughs> for the building. Uh, and you've heard the testimony of Mr. Picado. If you can reduce the coverage and have more open space, it would be then susceptible to the same issues that we've had before. Right, it does have that, that, that concern, I can understand that. And I think that the, uh, this additional coverage is, is somewhat mitigated because of the fact that it's a corner property. So you have more air and light to this building from the, the streets itself. Uh, the impact on the adjacent residential property down the street is somewhat mitigated too because that property has a driveway on the left side, so that building, the residential building, has a uh, separation from the property line itself. Uh, I was there and looking down the back of the, 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 uh, uh, the rear yards at front on the French Street, and as you go further down the street, there are a couple of uh, three-story brick buildings that are residential above commercial. They can go further, further back uh, than some of the other ones. So this isn't really that out of character, and as, as I said, the, neighbor, the corner kind of helps it kind of helps the whole streetscape turn the corner and activates the street to make it safer. Okay. And again, the impact if you're looking to the subject property from our neighbor uh, on Alexander Street. What kind of building is that on Alexander Street adjacent to it? It's a traditional wood frame residential structure, two and a half stories and two stories, a uh, couple of little porches, two stories and a peak roof above. Uh, right now we have some four stuff. Okay, and, but there is separation from that structure to our building by the driveway and the garage. Right, facing the building is a driveway on the left-hand side and there's a detached garage in the rear. And then on the other side where we have the other alleyway, there is a, again a, a building there in close proximity to our property line. Right, as you go down the, the street from our property, uh, they all have ground floor commercial, they all have, uh, well, they're relatively very next door. Two stories over, the second story is sort of under the peak. Uh, then there's a little bit of a, of a driveway between that building and it looks like they have some parking in the rear there uh, for that particular <coughs> building. But the rest of them are very close as you go down the block, so it's pretty much the same character. Now, the other variance that we are seeking is a parking variance. Yes. Okay. And would you care to comment and opine on the parking variance? Well, from our, our discussions, uh, these, these units are smaller, and uh, as Mr. Mercado had, had discussed it, uh, in, our, in our meetings, the uh, tenants here will, don't, will not typically own a car. Yes, there will be some, but the impact uh, should be uh, minimal. Uh, there, there will not be uh, a great deal of automobile ownership. As you pointed out, there's a fair amount of uh, uh, bicycle usage as an alternative to automobile in this, this neighborhood. Uh, there are buses that run in front uh, of the property. Um, I myself, when I came to visit the site, walked up from the, uh, the uh, downtown, so it's really not that, that far a walk either. So I think that that mitigates these impacts uh, to a certain degree. Uh, so I think that uh, for the amount of the impact that the Wall Street parking will create, it will not be substantial. And, and in fact, there is a bus stop right across the street, or on either side of the subject property, right there at the intersection of French and uh, right. Right. Alexander. Alexander, right at the right, right, right at right that there. intersection. Right. There's, a, there's a little public park right. across the street. And even the train station is within walking distance, and uh, 
if there is need for parking, there are, again, within walking, some walking distance, but walking distance, there are parking lots available if there are tenants who want to maintain cars. If they, if they really want to, want to maintain car and need to, they, they could uh, find, find such a commercial lot. Okay. And this is a fairly consistent use and development with limited par or no parking in, in an inner city area. Right. As I said, typically these, these neighborhood commercial districts uh, developed, you know, right along the street, very little side yards, and the ability to provide parking is not consistent. Okay. Now, I asked you to review the master plan of the city of New Brunswick, and does the master plan uh, give the board any guidance as far as uh, rendering a decision in this application? Um, yes, I think uh, Mr. Bignell actually mentioned in his report that uh, this area is recommended for, uh, and this lot is recommended for community, community commercial. Um, there's a goal on, on page 13 that talks about the increased residential land usage through infill, rehabilitation, and redevelopment of housing densities and types appropriate to the character of the existing neighborhoods. This particular neighborhood, this particular street, the character is mixed use, it's, it's residential over commercial, so I think we're consistent with what that, that goal is. Um, there's, a, there's a discussion on page 19 about things like workforce housing, and although this this uh, building is not restricted in terms of incomes, <coughs> the likelihood is that these rents would be affordable to people who are working people. So I think that we're along in that same, that same vein. Um, and there's a, a recommendation that in the, the C districts, the C1, C2A, C2B, et cetera, that uh, residential uses should be provided in the form of mixed use development. Um, and that is directly applicable to what we're talking about here. And then later on, uh, under some specific changes, I believe it's page 57, it discusses that the city should review its land use strategies and regulations in order to strengthen them to create sustainable mixed-use neighborhoods. And it goes on to say there should be a, a variety of housing choices that address neighborhood housing needs and uh, neighborhood accessibility to convenience, retail, central business districts, and such. So I think, again, this is, this is in that, that, same, that same vein. And does the municipal land use law uh, give any uh, guidance to the board as to what the board should be looking at and, and whether they should approve this application? Well, I think that uh, because these uses are permitted in the zone, so we're advancing the purposes of the zone plan, uh, the intent of the zone plan, uh, I think we advance some of the recommendations of the master plan. So I think that shows that we're going to general welfare, which would be consistent with 40, column 55, B 2A, which is uh, to encourage municipal action to guide the appropriate use of development of, this, uh, of lands in a matter of different public health, safety, morals, and welfare. So, I, I, I think that we do that. We do promote general welfare through this application. Um, there's also subparagraph G that discusses uh, sufficient space and appropriate location for a variety of different uses. And again, this is a, this is that type of appropriate location for this type of mixed use project. It's been recommended in the master plan and such as well. Uh, also, subparagraph so five talks about the more than the visual environment. And as the architect mentioned, the building is getting a little worn. It's a little frayed around the edges, uh, and this will be a significant uh, up, uplifting base look for the property. Uh, and it's, you know, it's, it's more prominent than your typical building, but it's on a corner, so I think that that promotes that desirable visual environment as well. In, in your experience, when people rehabilitate or upgrade uh, a building in an older neighborhood, does that have a general overall positive impact on the neighborhood as a whole, not only on this site? Yeah, I think you'll you find more people uh, would also be improving their properties. I noticed just from just walking up and down the street, there were a few, a few, home, a few properties that had already been renovated in the past, and maybe that's what encouraged Mr. Mercado actually to look at it as well. So it's kind of, you know, improvements will breed additional improvements. Do you feel that if the board were to grant the variance that would be sought here this evening, that there would be any negative impact on the zones from the zone? Now these these uses have already existed on this property. These uses exist throughout the the, the district there. Uh, allowing this project to proceed, I don't think would, would result in any other any new impacts or of any of any 
scale, it's certainly not a substantial detriment. Um, certainly that's for the general welfare or the public good or the character of the area. And uh, also in terms of the, the, the zone plan, I really think it promotes the intent of the zone plan. So, of course, there'd be no, no, no negative impact as well. And, and then, well, have, been, have you reached a general conclusion after hearing all of the testimony and reviewing the plan? Well, I, I, uh, as, as I was discussing, I think we've shown the, the positive criteria uh, in terms of promoting the purposes of the use of the land use law. We're consistent with certain recommendations of the master plan. I think the intent of the plan, I think the site is particularly suitable for this. It's a corner property. If you had uses like this on it already, and so therefore I think it's, it's suitable for this, this project. Uh, and I think in terms of as I was just discussing the negative criteria, there really is no substantial detriment either to the general welfare or to the uh, intent of the zone plan. So I think we've met the proofs on both ends. Thank you very much. I have a question. Any other board members? Any other board members? Unless the board wants to hear from the engineer, I will end my testimony. Again, we've had numerous meetings, and I think uh, the board will again have issues as we went along numerous reports as we made revisions to the plan to address all of the uh, engineering comments. So I, I, I think really uh, there's not a lot of engineering on this site, it's really mainly the building. And uh, so all that the board wants to hear from the engineer, I will then end my testimony this evening. At this time, I'll open it up to the public for a comment or question. Take note of the public for the portion that's closed. Any questions from the board?
Okay. <laughs> 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 